Channing up for the semi pro live, and we are live. Uh, this location is somewhere in Grand Prairie at, at this beautiful st uh, studio provided for us by the Big 12 Sports League. And we got some stuff hot off the presses, man. We got TNS. They're here at their first ever Big 12 TNS Media Day. So, you know, Big 12 likes to do things big. So, as they introduce a new program and welcome a new program into the family, of course, they got to have them come out and see the best of the business. Mario with Hero Shots getting getting the uh, exclusive photo shoot. So, we've got all the star players from TNS. We got the coaching staff. And, you know, before there's any confusion or, or any distorted views, we want to let you guys get it all from the top, man. So this is one of the, the owner of TNS, along with, uh, well, I, I believe we, we'll have Victor Mann out here later on. So you're going to have both of them. You know, Vic try to stay out the media. You know, he usually, <laughs> is it, it was crazy. Is it if he tried to stay out the media too? But, you know, due to Vic being a ninja, you know, he fades in and out, leaves you holding the bag. So, man, let's talk TNS, man. So uh, for, for a lot of our audience who aren't in the DFW or, or aren't familiar with Fort Worth, Texas, They've seen the brand. They don't actually know the history of, and where you guys came from. So give us a, a, a layman's introduction to TNS, the TNS uh, Cougars. What does it stand for and what is this program about? TNS is Team No South. And uh, it's our third year. This will be our third year, but you know, this is like year number 19 for me. Okay. So from Hallmark to Fort Worth Wolverines, the Truth, to A1G, the TNS. So, so you you're one of the OGs in the game as far as you football man. You've been around since like the Snoop League, going back. So, uh, you've been around. You've been around a lot of crucial pro, a lot of winning programs. So, tell us, man, uh, what was the vision behind you leaving? Like you were part of winning programs. So, what was the vision that that you had with Vic, where you guys wanted to come up with this program? Well, we had some uh, when we was A1G. Ty, who taught me a lot in this game, he decided he was going to step down. So when he stepped down, we and Vic just came up with TNS. Like his brand is Team No South. And I was like, man, let's do that. Let's do Team No South, like TNS. That's how we came up with it in the living room. So now you have it. All right, man. All right. So three years in existence, you guys have been uh, either winning or a competitive team on pretty much every level. What was the key? Because there's been a lot of programs that have changed their name, changed identities, or there's been a lot of programs that, that came in that had some, some you know, veterans at the top that haven't had the success that you guys have come in and did. So how were you guys able to come in and just gravitate so many premier kids and, and become a premier program in such a short amount of time? I think it's just a, a blessing. Like, what's meant to happen going to happen. It's nothing that we do special. It's just football you know what I'm saying like the history of us being in the game as long as I've been in the game and winning I've been blessed to win have great kids like so um, it makes it kind of easy for me to be able to pick the phone up Kyle and say I want your son well, let's talk about your 9U team you guys came into this year now last year they'll call it a rebuilding year came into this year and we're able to go into a battle tournament, your, your first attempt. And you guys were able to, I believe you guys were second team in the nation? Yeah, we, we got second. We got beat by Lambo in championship. So how were you able to put together a nationally ranked program in a matter of a year? Because you guys were a team that was competitive and, and known in the DFW last year, but just were able to make that next step to become a nationally known program within only a matter of a year. Well, I think uh, it started last year when they was eight, when we lost the DFW Elite. And uh, when I walked off that field, I knew what I had to do. I had to go out and recruit and get the ones that I got that I felt like was the best of the best. And, uh, you know, that's what I did. I was able to do it, and we had a, a real good season, a successful season. So, you know, I don't know, man. It ain't nothing that I don't normally do. So it ain't, it just, it's like waking up and going to sleep. So. It's, it's, it's cool. So on a competitive landscape and in a competitive city like Fort Worth, you have other brands. You have Pac Prime, 
you, you got your your your, uh, your league owner, your, uh, Fort Worth Crimson Tide, which is a nationally known program. So you have now you have uh, Metroplex Flex coming up in the ranks. So you have a lot of teams in Tarrant County that are young that are trying to get attention. How are you guys able to stay at the top of the recruiting game despite having all this competition around you? Just play football. Just play football. That's all you got to do. You play football, everything else is going to speak for itself. Everybody want to win. I don't care what they say. That it ain't about winning this and that. If it's not, why they keep score? You know what I'm saying? Why after every game somebody laughing, somebody crying? It's about winning. And, and I think as long as you do that, you do it the right way. And, you know, everybody ain't going to be happy, you know. The old man told me if you want to make everybody happy, then you need to sell ice cream. So I decided to coach football. So, hey. Hey, that's where we at with it, man. Real talk, real talk. Hey, I like this philosophy, man. Great recruiter. Now, uh, outside, of, outside of that, man, tell us about the, no, the Team No Soft brand, what it stands for, and what it means to this program. It's the Elastic Scholar... Um, something, I don't know. That's not even my, that, that area there, that area is for Amber, Shelby, <laughs> on do I let them the football man. <laughs> but look, we can't, they, they care about the scholastic and the scholars though, that's what you know. Yeah. Hey, look, we have a department for that, he's just not over it, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, hey, yeah. I like that, I like that, but hey, they care about the grades and sending your oh, scholars yeah. athletes to uh, Logan Tooley, my we're going to have that all weekly my too. My kids will tell you about the uh, grades from Booby to, you know, you get in trouble, it don't matter who you are, you don't. Sit on the sideline. Most definitely, man. Most That's definitely. So before we wrap it up, you know, we're gonna have some players on. We're gonna have the other members of your coaching staff as well. So we. This ain't for me, man. Most definitely, man. This is for them. This ain't for me. It ain't about me. It's about them, man. You see, look how they laughing and smiling and doing all that. That's what make me happy. Most football definitely. shit don't make me happy. I don't want so much. It don't even matter, man. Hey, we need more coaches with that type of attitude about the game, man. But before I let you go, I got to ask about the elephant in the room, man. You guys have been uh, uh, one of the premier Texas sports programs over the last couple of years. Uh, we just went on a nice national run. You guys had a great run in Texas sports last year. You guys have made the move. You're coming over to the Big 12. You've made the shift. What was some of the, the thought that went behind you guys making such a, a momentous decision? Um... Shout out to Tech Sports, man, Dana and them. They, they was there, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't no disrespect to them or nothing. Like I called Dana and let him know, you know, before I told anybody what was going on. So I don't never think that it's no bad blood. Like it ain't no bad blood with us. Like we cool, they're my people. But I felt like this was just the best thing for my organization. Like to, and then I like trying things new. Like me and Fred from San Antonio, I like, we like trying things new, man. We started the Snoop League and everybody was, wah, 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 wah. and every, at the end of the season, everybody in my mom wanted to get in it. So I just like doing something new, man. I feel like I'm gonna win wherever I'm at, so it don't matter. So let's go over here, let's try this, see how it work in Green Vision. He sold me on it, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it ain't easy to sell me. Hey, so, no. I, so he sold me on it, man, and, and I like the vision, and we're gonna do everything in our power to make the vision possible. And we're gonna bring it to reality for these kids, man. So that's where we at with it. Most definitely, most definitely now. Outside of that, man, so we got your thoughts on, on the move. So what were some of the things about the Big 12 that actually attracted you? What were some of the things that were positive about what you saw going on over in the Big 12 that you liked and, and thought that could help you in your program? Man, you good, man. I like, man, you good at what you do. I'm going to enjoy you this year. You good, man. <laughs> My, um... I liked how y'all did the Heisman. Like, the Heisman was, like, dope, man. How you got the kids out there, they all dressed up. You know, you had your top three, four finalists. And you know how you did it, man. Shout out to you, man. You know, you made it. You a part of it, too, man. You make it, you know, your voice and how you video the kids and all that, man. I've been watching you for a minute. I watched the John Curry shit, too, baby. <laughs> Well, hey. I, mean, I know how to be messy, and I'm going to keep it hood with it. I don't care, you know what I'm saying? We lie. Hey, do the way you grieve, man. I have no, officially, I have no beef with John Carroll. 
I don't know about unofficially, but officially I have no beef with John Kerry. You know, I've been watching you for a minute. Hey, this is going to be fun. I've been watching you for a minute, man. So, I, 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 but uh, make, making the shift is big time news over to us because, to be honest, it's not just about uh, some leagues, not saying about any other leagues. I'm not even talking about Texas sports. Some leagues would just be happy with accumulating a lot of teams. Yeah. What I like about the Big 12, they're going after competitive programs. If this league was built to be an easy place to win, they try to keep what they already had going and try to recruit all the little weak teams off the edge. You got William over here who's the owner who has the teams that are competitive on the same age levels that you are, and he's still willing to open up the league and invite in, you know, tough nationally ranked opponents because at the end of the day, it's not about any individual team. It's about the health of the whole overall league. And having a program like TNS is a value add for everyone who's involved, including the media. I, I, hey, I have access to TNS. I'm going to be dropping so many reels and videos on these kids. So it's about to go down. You'll be seeing them all over the screen. So we're going to take a quick little break, reshuffle. We got Zimmy in the house, man. But now we're going to run through some kids. We're going to bring in Webb next. He's one of the dogs from TNS. You've been seeing him on your screen as a player making highlights for years. We're going to get him on here, talk to the kid one-on-one, -on -one, see what he's got on his mind. So give us a short break. We'll be right back. You're watching the Big 12 Media Day TNS edition. Hi, this is Channing Humphrey with Semi Pro Live, and I am back, man. We got another one of these athletes. Now, I know you guys are a little bit confused. Uh, this is a Big 12, I guess, slash Hallmark track program. You know, Hallmark is, and we got Hallmark in the Big 12, too. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Hallmark program. So, we got track out here as well. So, we had to bring in one of the dual sport athletes that will be on display with the Big 12 League. So, I got my guy Webb. Now, the only reason I don't know your first name is because when I go to your games, I only read you the back of your jersey. So, for the folks at home, for our audience who, who aren't familiar with you as much as I am, man, let's get your first and last name. What school you attend and what position you play? Uh, my, my name is Jared Webb. I go to R. Patterson Elementary, and I play quarterback, running back, and receiver. All right, man. So, how many years have you been with Team NoSoft? I've, I've been playing for TNS for, like, three years. So, man, tell us about the program. You know, we we have a lot of times we bring the coaches on. We let the coaches talk about the program. We let the coaches talk about the team, how they love it, how they enjoy it. It's not often that we bring the kids in, and we want you guys to tell us how's it feel being a part of this organization. So, how have you enjoyed being a no soft cougar? Well, when I first joined, it was a lot of fun. But this year, I feel like I'm going to be way better. Uh, now, but then next year, I'm going to be uh, way better than this year. Well, what are some of the things that, that, that were some of the highlights of your season that had you really happy or, or really excited about being a Cougar this year? Oh, uh, last year, I had caught my first pick ever, and uh, I got my first touchdown, and it was fun. 
So it was your first, was it your first defensive touchdown or that was your first pick? So you, so your, it was all on the same play. Mm -hmm. So you just, you just got both of them out the way at one shot. <laughs> all right. So what game was that in? Who are you playing? We was playing the uh, Bills. The Bills? Okay. Okay. Well, hey man, hey, we don't, we're not gonna do no Bills slander. Shout out to Joe. But uh, so you playing the Bills, man? So you guys had quite the season. So how'd your season end this year? We ended good. We ended we ended with a loss, but in the playoffs we uh, beat the team that we lost against. So uh, where did that end that? So it was in the championship, or where'd you guys end? Uh, yeah, it was in the championship. So you made it to the championship. So was that a that was a step above what you guys did last year, or you guys did this is a much better season with how you guys did in the past? Yes. So what were some of the things about the season that you feel made you guys better this season coming out? We had new people and we had more skilled players and like and like faster and like better people. So you brought some of your track brothers over. Yes. All right, they all right. Well, let's talk. We got to talk about the elephant in the room. You out here in your your, your hallmark uh, track uniform, covered in covered in gold. You know what I'm saying? Covered in medals. Came in here. I didn't know what that. No, I thought somebody had broke something. I was like, hey, it's not my facility. I ain't gonna worry about it. So. Uh, tell us about these medals, man. How long have you been running track? I started running track when I was five, so that was about like four years. So what are your events? What are, what, what, uh, what are your races that you run? 4x1, four 4x4, four four and the 200. You're a relay man, relay man. So what attracts you to relays over uh, being an individual runner? Uh, I don't really like running individual. Like, I, I like running the 4x1. That's my favorite race, but... I can, my 200, I'm real, I'm real good at it. At you, you like the team aspect of it? Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. That kind of connects to football because, you know, you can't play football by yourself. Track's one of those sports you can play by yourself, but you like the team aspect, so you run that. Uh, actually, in a weird coincidence, you, you guys had book buddies when you were in elementary school? We... We had book buddies. Like you'd have like a, a kid from an older grade that helped you learn how to read. So like in second grade, so my book buddy was this dude when I went to Ellis. His name was uh, Jeremy Warner. You know who Jeremy Warner is? Nope. Jeremy Warner is that white dude who's always on the four by one in the Olympics. You know that random dude with the buzz cut, always wears glasses. He's actually from the DFW. He's from uh, Arlington, Texas. He went to uh, Ellis Elementary, Nichols Junior High, and Lamar High School. But uh, he went to Baylor, and for a while, he was one of the fastest people on the planet. But, you know, he follows that tradition of being a football player and a track athlete. So I hope you can follow along the lines, man. I could be watching you maybe over at Baylor, Texas, one of these big-time Division One programs. But before we go ahead and let you get back to your photo shoot, because you up next, uh, you got any final messages for the folks at home or any programs or anybody you want to give a shout-out to? It's a lie because you finna shout out your mama. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, so go ahead, shout out your mom. And then if you want to think of any other organizations like Hallmark Track or the TNS Cougars that you want to shout out before you go out, you can do them too. So I uh, shout out to TNS Cougar, my mom, my dad, my brothers, and my sisters, and Hallmark Track. All right, big dog. Well, hey, this is a brave man. I came through. I said, who want to interview first? His hand shot up. So I'm going to let him get back to his photo shoot. We're going to bring in. Another coach, we're going to rotate, we're going to go coach, player, coach, player, coach, player. So we're going to bring in the coach next, man. So I'm going to let him get to his photo shoot. We'll see you guys next time on Semi-Pro Live. All right, guys, we are back. This is Channing Humphrey with Semi-Pro Live. I know y'all, well, I hope y'all didn't see. I think the Big 12 logo was up when Webb left me hanging on that last one. 
You know, I thought yeah. I was cooler than that. Man, he be on the go, man. Well, that's Kid Dynamite. That's what I call him, man. Kid Dynamite. All right, man. So, man, we got another one. Well, right, let me guys, turn this down. Back. I'm yeah. doing media. I'm terrible right now. Anyway, so after we got that taken care of, man, we got Coach Cam with TNS, man. So I, I want to get some more information about you. I want to find out what coach you, co I mean, what level you coach on, and what the outlook and the history of your little group has been over the last couple of years. So, uh, man, Coach Cam, so what age group do you coach? And I coach a uh, eight U. We'll be the nine U next year. Okay, okay. So you'll be ascending to the national mantle next. Yeah, man. We did an interview with you uh, when we were seven U. We had just played SCD. Oh, okay. After okay. Mansfield, you had interview you interviewed Kid Dynamite and uh, Baby Goat when we had him. All right, man. So you guys have been on the program before, so we actually got a, a TNS audience that's tuning in, man. So. Tell us for the folks, you know, we got some South Texas people, some Arkansas people to tune in too. So tell us a little bit more about your level and how you guys did this season. Uh, my AU, we did really good, man. We we really shocked a lot of people, man. We came, we, we was the silent killer all season, just like we was when we was on Saturday. We win week after week after week. Every game we come out there, win, win. Everybody silently talking about everybody else. But here, we, here, here come TNS. It's every year, same thing. Here come TNS playoffs here. Oh, they gonna they gonna they gonna fall off. They gonna fall off. flush, them. flush. Them. Close games. You know what I'm saying? We had we had a bunch of close games. Some of them didn't have to be close, but you know you gonna get them. You gonna get them games where they close. You gonna get games where you blowing them out. We had blowout wins. We put up more points this year than we did last year. And uh, we also didn't allow nothing. To shout out to my defensive coordinator, Coach Channing. Uh, Y'all will get to meet him oh, yeah, later we're on. We're going to have another chance. We're going to double Channing this joint. Yes, sir. Oh, you know, Channing Humphrey. And goddamn <laughs> Channing. Oh, my bad. Goddamn Channing Crosley. Man, but, uh, yeah, man, my eight, you, we did fantastic. We decided to go uh, to the Nationals again, uh, which, let me reverse, seven you, we went out there and we won in the UIFL. We didn't get too much credit for it because they, oh, it's the all-star bracket. It was, what? You got a national championship. national championship. Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on. So, yeah, man. Why is nobody even talking about this? No, no, uh, because they said it was the all-star bracket, man. We... We added three kids, man, and I'm not discrediting man, these three boys. Tournament is a national tournament, man. I don't want to hear about We went out there and we, we swept the tournament, man. We swept the tournament. Congratulations, man. You a hey, man, national championship yeah, coach, man. man. I ain't gonna fake that last year, man. The last hey, year. Look, man, all that stuff be looking the same to me. I just got into youth football, man. All star bracket. The man went to a national tournament, swept the bracket. It is what it is. So, man, outside of that, bro. Uh, so I want to talk to you know Zimmy. He too cool for school. He'll never let out his true ninja secrets. No. But, you know, on the another no, end, that's, that's he, he Nick Saban. So he really, a lot of kids, he can just make the phone call. They, they come into TNS, especially on that Elite Nine you, unit. You have a team that, you know, you guys are elite, but you guys are on the up and come. Mm -hmm. So how have you guys been able to keep getting these recruits to add to your, to your rankings, even though people are trying to come in your kitchen and get still out your cupboard? We, oh, yeah, we got plenty of that going on. I was just notified about one today, man. But, uh, yeah, we got a lot of pickups on there. We, we put it uh, on there. We was like, oh, transfer portal. We, we really jumped it off. We started dropping the kids. We was getting the recruits. And everybody was thinking that it was me and Coach Channing hopping in parents' inbox. Oh, wow. These parents were reaching out to us. And that's how it, that's how it started out. I mean, we, me and Coach Channing started out. When we started 10 years, man, we had seven players. We had practice three days a week, though. And then, oh, we got three, four more, four, four, five more. We're on the season now, seven you. And we did what we did. So, like I said, I, I give a lot of shout out to my defense coordinator and uh, my offense coordinator this year that I added this year. Uh, I called all my offense last year on seven U. I added on uh, Webb's dad as my offense coordinator. Man, is talented. Man, is talented. He really showed a lot of players. I mean, a lot of teams that these eight-year-olds can uh, play some high-level football with these plays, man. He got some plays that he can go to any high school and run that uh, varsity offense. Like, it's high-power offense. And these eight-year-olds that we have, they – So you putting some light on, on, you know, and squashing some of the rumors. So, you know, it's some people that think that you were in the inbox or you, it's some people that you think – not some people that think. There are some people on on the blue app that the blue app, that yeah. think it's it's a fair weather friend thing. You know, while yeah. we win and we want to be with you, we seen this other program win a little bit, so we gonna go over there. Well, really, it might be that 
the style of offense is just a little bit more attractive to those style of players. Since I've been coaching, I've been coaching going on five years now. Since I've been coaching, kids have always just drawn to me. A lot of these kids that I got, these new recruits, these are my flag players from four and five year olds. They 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 coming back to their coach camp. So now it's not oh. He's just racking up all the good players. Now these are talented kids that I'll help grow and build since they were four or five years old. I took a year or two off away from them, and they developed as well with their other coaches. But these boys, they just, they just, they just flock to me. I can go in. I ain't gonna say I can go anywhere. Teams in Dallas know me. Players in, from teams in Dallas know me. Um, it's leagues like uh, Texas, the Fort Worth Longhorns. It's kids over there that know me. It's just me and being that environment. I've always wanted to be that coach that I want. That's my thing. I'm trying to be that coach for these kids that I wanted when I was young. You know what I'm saying? I've been around just about every coach you can be. Daddy ball coach, the, the coach that uh, got favorites. Oh, he's a disciplinary. You, you name it, I've been around that type of coach. So, I just always, I know I know what these kids need. I'm going to bring it forward to the table. I'm going to bring this energy. That's why it's Mr. Yes, yeah, sir. Like, they, they know what it is. Like, I get really loud. I don't want to mess with me, Mike. But I get loud for these boys, and I get and the energy feeds off into them. Man. That's it. And they hit the field with it. And you will notice if my energy's down, I, the problem of the game, we, we took air along when my energy was down. My energy up, we, hey, we rolling. So I got to ask you, man, with the recent recruits and, and how you guys were able to perform this season with the athletes you already have on hand, what is it that we at, in the media and parents at home, what should we expect to see from TNS this next season? whole lot of firepower. I'm talking about let them on, let them off. They, oh, what you going to do without them? Watch me. Let them on, let them off. Self offense, we're going to go 10 on. I mean, let them on 10 off, keep my quarterback out there. You know, we can't leave the field general. Got my new, got my quarterback back, Baby Mahomes. That's his new name. He rocking that one five. Malachi the Messenger. That's my boy. We got Big Malachi over here. All right, man. Well, he's one of the athletes we'll have up next, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you giving us a little bit of the time. I told you we're not going to get too controversial. That's not how we do things, man. We, we I got an interview coming up. Shout out to Kiva and Toya. I got an interview still to do with y'all. I'm still going to come do that interview. Me and Coach Shannon coming through. The kidnappers, we coming through. They coming through. Well, hey, man, appreciate you for coming on. We're going to have the rest of the TNS gang on the camera next. We'll see you guys on Semi-Pro Live, Big 12 Media Day, TNS Edition. All right, guys, we are back, man. I got big number three, Baby C. Well, we got we C three. We got any cool nicknames, logos coming out, big dog? No sir, no sir. We I think we need to put a three C logo out there, man. You know, we be making logos in our free time. We might drop a three C logo at random. But all right, man, we got TNS uh, Team No Soft Cougar number three, uh, Baby C. But we got to get the 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 real names for for the folks at home. Anybody who's trying to recruit you for an All Star game or something like that. So. Man, what's your first and last name? What school you currently go to? And what position you play on what level? Uh, my name is Christian Hamilton. I go to Inter International Leadership of Texas. I play a little bit of everything. I'm an athlete guy around. Okay. Uh, so, man, how long have you been with uh, the TNS Cougars? Uh, just for this year. So this is your first year. So you're actually a, a good athlete to interview about the program because you can tell us how life was with your other programs compared to how you've enjoyed being over here with the Cougars, right? Yes, sir. All right, man. So, uh, so speaking of that, so what, what program were you with before you were with the Cougars? I was with the Predators. All right, man. So, uh, compared to your old program, and how have you liked being a Cougar this year? Very good. I, I love this year. I know everybody for a long time, too. 
Oh, okay. So you went to school with some of the kids that are over here? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So is that kind of what attracted you to the, to the program? Was it, you know, you kind of already knew the kids and you already had that built-up chemistry? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. So uh, out of all the positions that you play, what's your favorite position? Slide. Slide. All right. All right. So, you, so you're a speedster. Yeah. So you, you, you're part of that newfound speed that you, that you uh, Webb was talking about coming over to the squad. Yes, sir. All right, man. So, what what uh, what's your favorite part about being a slot receiver? Is it the range of different routes that you do? Because you know, from the slot, you get to get play a little running back. You got the jet sweep. Uh, you get the full range of routes because you can hit your seam route, hit some deep. You can hit your post. You get the Q routes. You get all the cool routes, and you get the matchups on the linebackers. So, what's your favorite aspect about being a slot receiver? And and how surprised were you that me? Alignment. Somebody this fat knew that much about the slot receiver position. Uh. uh. <laughs> hey, my brother's skinny, man. I'm the I ain't the fattest one in the family, but <laughs> no. But what's your favorite aspect about playing the slot position? Catching the ball and running just sweep. All right, man. So, so for folks at home who've never got to catch a football as much as you have. What are some of the differences between being a slot receiver where you're on the inside and being an outside receiver where you're at one-on-one -on, -one on the outside? Outside, it's about like, if you're real, like tall and muscular and... Uh, you can muscle somebody out the way. Yeah. So they're more... Like DK Metcalf. Like, like DK Metcalf. Well, he play a lot of slot though, but... More like Dez Bryant, the old school alpha receiver that wants to go up, get physical. But you want to play a different style of football. You're, you're more like uh, Tariq Hill, someone that wants, where they want to catch you in a mismatch and let you speed it and what you can do after the ball's in your hand, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, do you play any other sports outside of football? Uh, yeah, I play basketball this year. You play basketball this year. What's your position in basketball? I don't know. We haven't had practice yet. Is it your, is your first year playing? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what actually what attracted you to basketball? Steph Curry. Steph Curry. So you about to get? I know, man. I'm from Akron. It hurts my feelings. They don't say LeBron anymore. But man, so so you plan on coming out and being a shooter? Now, I see the aspects of Seth. You know, you know, you guys are kind of similar complexion. Your hair is way cooler than Seth Curry's has ever been. So, you know, I don't know. That might mess up your shooting. You know, might the aerodynamics. That might be why Seth come out so smooth. <laughs> but uh, so are, are you a shooter or are you trying to learn to be a shooter? Both. Okay, okay. I respect that, man. I respect that. All right, all right. So you're going to come out here and get a Seth Curry on. So what, what uh, basketball organization are you going to be a part of in case we want to pop in and get some clips? TNS. Oh, TNS got a basketball program? Well, tell us about this TNS basketball program. Who, who your coach? Uh, coach Cam said it might be Coach Zimmy. Okay. Hey, you know what's funny? Zimmy looked like he could hoop. <laughs> I can't verify it. I ain't never seen it. But if you look at Coach Zimmy, he looked like he could hoop. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expect for you guys to be a pretty decent basketball program, man. But. We got, we got the rest of your teammates in here. We're going to let everybody jump on and give their peace. But So before we slide on to the next uh, person in the program, we want to get your final word. So uh, do you have any organizations, any uh, family members, teammates, anybody you want to give a shout-out to before we go ahead and move on to the next interview? Uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to my granny. Hey, let's put some names on it, man. Uh, Tasha. All right, man. Well, hey, big shout out to Tasha. Uh, big shout out to the TNS Cougar family for allowing us to have access to these awesome athletes, man. He is one of the kids who will be making the shift with the Team No Soft Cougars. So we're going to be able to see them all season because we're going to be all over the Big 12 coming next season. So you'll be able to catch him right here on Semi Pro Live. So, But until next time, we'll have Baby C. He'll get back here, get his photo shoot going. We'll have on the next player. We'll see you guys next time on Semi Pro Live.
Well, oh, we're back. Hey, this is Shannon Humphrey with Semi Pro Live. I'm here with, hey, really was crazy. Jasmine had been trying to give me this nickname for years. She was like, we're going to start calling you the Black Channing on Twitter. And I was like, nah, bro, it's another one. So, yeah, Channing Crosby. So, yeah. Channing Crosley. We got another Channing in the house, man. So, what level of the TNS uh, Team No Soft Cougars do you coach? I coach the AU. I'm the defensive coordinator. All right, man. So, you're part of that AU unit that not only have – I know the Big 12 was doing some shifting, but you guys had a big shift on the AU landscape. And then in addition to that, you guys had a pretty gr good season that really wasn't expected from a lot of the, the analysts and, and media personalities out there. So tell us, man, what was the key to you guys kind of shocking the world this year? Man, we, um, we did the same thing that we did when we was on 7U. You know, we uh, stuck to our basics. All our kids came to practice. And we just we kept it we kept it simple, like it wasn't nothing that we changed up from seven U. Like we our kids are regular kids. They not overhyped none of that. We just come to practice. We come to play anywhere we show up. Now, do you think that you guys benefited a little bit from being overlooked this year? Because you guys were doing your thing, and the fact that you were overlooked meant that you guys got to develop your athletes without the prying eyes of the league trying to figure out what you guys were doing. Do you think? And how do you feel that you guys are going to adjust to more people paying attention to what you guys got going on this year? Hopefully we, we stay the same. Like, the overlooked thing, I like that because didn't nobody know us. Nobody didn't find out about us until the eighth game of the season. We was undefeated. We, uh, was, we wasn't giving up no points, none of that type of stuff. I, I mean, I, don't, I think our kids will be ready for the same type of thing. Hopefully it's not too much hype because we, you know, we, we want to just stick to the, the regular stuff. That's it. Well, you know, hopefully. You know, you got Patrick Bautizzi. He's going to be out here trying to hype y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely will be included in some kind of hip-hop video this year. There'll be no cussing. <laughs> but, man, outside of that, man, so you guys are coming over to a, a, a pretty competitive AU division over here in the Big 12. What is your – how do you feel about this new set of competition that you're going to have access to, especially where Texas is sports? You guys were a, tech, a strong Texas yeah. AU division, but – this division is going to be statewide. You're going to have all the way down to San Antonio, maybe even down to Corpus in South Texas, and you're going to have competition even in Oklahoma City. So how do you feel playing on a multi-state platform? Uh, I hope everything stays the same for us, but I'm going to be honest. The group that we have, not too many people worry me. I'm not being cocky or nothing. I just feel like it's going to be the same results. Same results. Same Different leagues, same results. We, we going to I'm going to be honest, we're we going to beat a lot of people, y'all. That's how we're going to do that. All right, man. I have to ask you, you guys have a lot of big-name personalities, of big-name players coming into your program for the first time. Now, with you guys being overlooked by a lot of people, that wasn't something that you guys had to deal with in the past. So how should we expect for you guys to bring these new kids, these new personalities, these new parents into the fold? We're just going to add them in just like everybody else and – I feel like they're going to be comfortable. Once they see the program, they're going to fit in, and it'll be the same thing. Uh, the parents, we don't really too much worry, our, worry about our parents. Our parents are good. It's just about the boys being comfortable with each other. That's all we worry about. So um, I, I, think, I think we'll adjust pretty good. Just get them in and just get them used to the program, and we're just going to start rolling week by week. All right, man. So uh, now with this new platform, we're gonna have a lot more attention and eyes on on the TNS program. What are what are your hopes for next season? What do we need to expect for you guys on next season? To make the same noise that we did and act like no attention's on us. Stick to be, being the same and not changing. Be one family on one accord at all times. Hey, man, hey, this is a very disciplined coaching staff. They are all on one accord, man. We're not getting nothing out of them today. I want to just give a, a big thank you for you coming out, man, giving us a piece of your time, letting your kids come through for this. This is not going to be the last interview with my dog, Channing. Well, I guess you could be the black Channing. I'm yeah. Channing Humphrey with Semi Pro yeah. Live. This is black Channing. And then we got that other Channing, uh, I think that Magic Mike dude, he's like the third most famous Channing. And we'll, we might let him in the club if he wants to make some investments in the program. But, <laughs> but outside of that, man, you got any final messages for the folks at home? Be ready, TNS Cougar. We come to Big 12 and take it all over, every level.
Hey, that'll be the final word. Play the music. We'll see you guys next time with the next interview. Alright guys, hey, it's a school of night, so we're not gonna keep these kids out all night. So I got a couple of the stars that are coming in right before we gotta get home and start doing some homework. So I'm gonna let these gentlemen introduce themselves to our semi-pro audience, man. We'll we'll start off the line the first because he's the coolest. My name is Chase, aka Big Chase. And um I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm the last the D line and the office line. Alright. My name's Southside. In my position, quarterback. Yeah, oh. He too cool for me, man. <laughs> when he came over there, my dad's Southside. I was like, who is this kid? Cool as hell. <laughs> okay, we got my dog Southside. But what position you play, though? Quarterback. Quarterback, all right. It, man, I, it's not up, man. That's that. That's shout out to uh, Lamar Jackson. He's the only reason the quarterbacks get to be this cool. I remember the quarterback was a lame dude. <laughs> All right, man, number zero. Let's get the first and last name. And uh, what position you play? Trey, my name is Trey Long. I play running back and defensive end. Uh, you had something to say, then you paused. Mm -hmm. well, All right, no. that's good. You probably paused on purpose. But anyway, man, what age group we all on? Ten you, ten you, ten you. All right, just graduated. So y'all are part of that group, man, that made this national run this year, man. So y'all on that uh, started from the bottom. Now you're here, made a big splash onto the national stage, man. What was the big key to how you guys were able to flip the the momentum, the name, the the reputation of, of that ten you, uh, nine you, ten you brand this last year with TNS? I think it was definitely because um, we changed. They was getting mad because the people was bringing over. Our team was already good. We just had to have, we had one more piece. And we put it together and they started hating. <laughs> I understand, man. I understand. All right, Big Dog. Well, at the quarterback captain of, of, the, of the offensive ship, man. So you guys had a pretty good showing last year, man. Outside of the new additions, what were some of the changes that you guys made as an offense that made you guys a little bit more potent this year? Um, yeah, the line and the uh, raw receiver was running. So your, your, your receivers, their routes got a little bit sharper and the line was giving you more protection this year. What? None. You can say it, man. <laughs> you can say it. Shout out to me because I was on the line for him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my dog right here. Hey, man, sometimes, hey, make sure you get your credit. Sometimes you got to take it. But all right, man. So you, your line play, and that was kind of the story in the media, man. Everybody was talking about this pass rush and the blocking that had came, man. So it was that one of the main differences is that you guys were able to get a lot more protection on offense and let you guys pick up more yards with your receivers and running backs? Yes. <laughs> was, it was the protection, did it make it a little bit easier for you as an offensive player and defensive player because you get more pressure so the quarterbacks are having less time to stand in the pocket and on offense, your quarterback has more time to get you the ball? Yes. All right, man. Well, in your opinion, man, what were some of the major changes on this season? Um, I mean, the, de defense got, the defensive line got to the backfield fast enough before they could uh, get past the line of scrimmage. 
All right, man, all right. Well, we'll swing back to my guy. He's very talkative, so I'll, I'll float to where the talkative comes from. So, man, uh, tell me, man, what were some of the things that you changed in your game? What did you change about yourself as a player from last year to this year that allowed you guys from being a, a Metroplex powerhouse, which what you guys have been for, for years? You guys had always been a Metroplex powerhouse. In the DFW, everybody knew about this unit where you guys were made, able to make a national splash year. What did you change that helped your teammates get to that next level? Um, I think it was just, I know you're not supposed to take breaks off plays, and that's what I tried to not to do. And if I didn't do it, hey, my teammates would feel that hype. And I had that hype around me, so I was like, okay, we got to get hyped too. So, so you... I'll, I'll say, you you were trying to say it in a cool way, so you were in better shape this year. You weren't taking no plays off. You was able to go every play this year. Yes. So what were some of the – so what do you contribute you being in better shape to? Are you eating better? Were your coaches running y'all more? As a unit, man, what do you guys think was the difference in your linemen and everybody on the team being in better um, shape this year? Coaches was uh, running us better. Man, they said better. I got them brainwashed. Where's Zindy at, man? He's somewhere smiling right now. He said, I ain't never heard a kid. I heard kids say, Coach was running us hard. Coach was on us. They said, nah, they was running us better. I don't know what they did, but it hurt more and it improved. But all right, man. All right, so outside of football, man, we got multi-sports athletes over here. What do you guys do outside of football? Basketball. Okay, what position you play? Shooting go. I mean, small forward. Small for you, a shooting guard. Go with your first five, man. You know you like to rock. Point guard. Point guard. All right, so you just a quarterback in all things. You like running people. Yeah. It ain't nothing wrong with being a – hey, we got a future boss on here, man. It's nothing wrong with already knowing you a future boss, man. So, outside of football, what you doing, big dog? Basketball, and I play center. You play center now. What I am going to do, shout out to uh, Tevi and Metroplex Flex. And this is what I'm about to start popping up with my son. He play lineman, too. Over at Trinity, I think on Wednesdays, they be having pick up rugby games. You need to go check that out. As big athletes, I implore all linemen parents, check out rugby. It's like soccer for big kids. It's a way that you, it's a, something that's fun. It still involves tackling, physicality that they can do in the off season. That actually a lot of the aspects of the rugby game will help them improve on aspects of football. So look into it. And Dominican Sue, he used to love playing rugby. So check it out, man. But uh, outside of athletics, man, we went over your football stuff. We went over your other sports. What's going on in the classroom, man? We got any? Uh, we got any scholars over here? Who, who on the honor roll? Mm -hmm. Okay, we got all three. You out of three. Okay, what's your favorite subject? Math. 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 Man, this generation. Why are y'all so much smarter than us, man? I hated math, bro. Math used to make me sweat. Why do y'all like math? I think I, I liked history and science. No, reading, reading makes you sweat. Reading, reading makes you sweat. Yeah, reading. Reading. Oh, you know, <laughs> letters. All the letters are the same, bro. Math is hard. No, it's whenever you. It's whenever you reading and. They know what reading level you can be on, but they make you do a higher level. I mean, there's always being a higher level. Like with mad, you you understand it more because they're breaking it down to you. But they send you, but they send you off to yourself on reading. Hey, you know, you and your homies could be getting hyped for each other about reading the same way y'all be getting hyped in the game. You know what I'm saying? When, your, when one of your teammates posted they made the uh, made the honor roll or that they got a hundred on a test, man. Y'all need to be hype on there making uh, YouTube and TikTok videos about that stuff just like you are about your football stuff. Because to be honest, Nick Saban looking at them grades the same way he's looking at them film. You feel me? <laughs> the same exact way. So uh, when I see on your Instagram, it should be like, uh, a sack, uh, a tackle. Here go my report card. A <laughs> sack, tackle, here go my report card. Bro. We got these young mathematicians in the house, man. So uh, let's get on to the fun stuff. We got any gamers? Um, kind of. Uh, y'all got busy schedules. I can understand y'all not being gamers. And you know, the, and since you can't buy a PlayStation 5 from the store, you got to buy it from some dude out of his trunk everywhere. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Give me a discount. But, you know, what games y'all on? Madden. GTA. 2K. 2K, okay. We ain't got no Call of Duty. All right, man. Y'all got cell phones. Download Call of Duty Mobile and look for 
Channing Humphrey, was it? I'm Boss 759. You ain't got it. You ain't got a cell phone. You already got it? All right. Well, so I'm going to link up with you. Y'all need to join my clan. I'll be out there, bro. You already it. Man, I'm like, I'm nationally ranked, bro. Like, nationally world ranked. I'm cold. Like, I'm super nice. I can't play at all on the actual game system, but on this big old tablet screen, I'll be killing folks out there. We're going to see tonight. Parents, don't be mad if your kids is up playing Call of Duty Mobile with me. You know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> I don't cuss when I play, so you know at least I'm better than everybody else. But before we let y'all go, man, you know we know y'all young, y'all got active, y'all active on social media. So uh, anybody got any uh, Instagram tags, uh, TikTok tags, so we can the folks can follow you at home, get some highlights. Go follow TNS underscore Trey Zero on Instagram. All right. Uh, TikTok TNS underscore Dre One. All right. Big Chase the um, the goat. Man, you gotta say Big Chase the goat with your chest. Let's start that over, man. Hold up, man. Big Chase the go the goat underscore. All right, man. Big Chase the goat. We gonna make sure you follow us. Follow our Instagram and TikTok too, man. We trying to get those jumping as well. But I'm gonna let these follow my Instagram too. Dre Shiesty. Dre underscore Shiesty. <laughs> I promise to God, I'm about to follow your Instagram. <laughs> I promise I'm about to follow his Instagram. Everybody, anybody else got anything else? Uh, to my sponsor, sponsor mission, uh, Unleashed Athletes. Hey. They putting on for the homies, man. That's what's up, man. I wish people would share. Where my homies at? Why don't y'all share my stuff, man? Share my stuff, bro. Why are you not sharing my stuff? I'm getting paid for these reels, man. I got one too. Unleashed Athletes. All day. Unleash Athlete, baby. Okay, Unleash Athlete. Well, hey, man, we're going to have the actual owner of Unleash Athletes on a little bit later on in this segment. So he's going to give us some more information about this fine company and some of the things they have on the horizon a little bit later on in the segment. But uh, until next time, we're going to go ahead and let these young men get ready for their uh, hectic school day they have tomorrow. So we'll see you guys next time on Semi Pro Live. I'm back, man, and you know, certain players gotta have their own platform, especially when they're quarterbacks, man. We're here with Malachi the Messenger, man. The man, the myth, the legend. He's got a couple of other nicknames. I'm gonna let him slide them on there, man. So, so, you know, I've never been this cool because they only call me Channing. I've never even had a nickname. I don't know why. When your name, we got a 16 letter, you know, first and last. Now I got eight in eight letters each name so they kind of just leave it at that but let's let's go down the list of those different names you got one of them Malachi the messenger second one baby Mahomes then that's really it okay okay so uh man you man, you got quite the quite the Instagram following you've been doing a little bit for yourself man so how's it felt being a TNS Cougar it felt good I'm playing with my little cousins Playing with the people I'm used to play with. So you got family members over here. So who are your cousins, man? What levels they play on? Oh, Nahi. The name is Webb. That's oh, his last name. Okay, okay. So, so quarterback family, quarterback family. So how, so how's it? I've never had that. You know, I played lineman, and my little brother was a corner. So we were the exact opposite. It wasn't no going in the backyard, training together. I could go run and chase after him, but he was way faster than me. What's it like having family members that are close? You guys are in the same program. You guys probably stay in Tarrant County in the same area. What's it like having a family member that plays the same position as you 
they, you know, you can kind of give them advice because he's your little cousin. So you guys play the same position. You can go out to his games. You can tell him about your game. And you guys can exchange information. So what's it like having a, a little cousin that plays the same position? Good, and then I can play wide receiver, and he can be a quarterback whenever he wants to. <laughs> all right, man. All right. So, do you guys train together? Not really. All right. So, you guys train separately? You just play together? All right. So, I don't, I don't play no more because I broke my collarbone playing be playing before practice. Man, when you kids, you feel like stuff is forever. He said, I don't play no more. Like, he didn't got retired. <laughs> like, he out. What you out for, like, four months? What you? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? You've been on the earth less than a decade, man. You know, two, three months a long time. All right, now, you know you're playing football again. You're going to bounce back from this. What's in the Bible? This too shall pass, my young brother. So when we get you back on the field and you, you're back at full strength, man, what are your plans for next year? Plans, throw over 100, or 100 yards or 150. Per game? Yeah. All right, man, that's a nice little goal, man. That's a nice little goal. So in the off season, what are you going to be doing to work on that? Are you doing some training with anybody? Or are, you, are you doing seven on seven? I might do both, training and do 7 on 7 too. Okay, so what are some of the things you've been doing to rehab your collarbone? I didn't just sit back, let it heal. Okay, do you guys have to, have, you have to, you, how long have you been out your sling? Oh, he's, yeah, I mean, he can't be going to media day, you know, in a sling, so I understand. He'll be back on soon, y'all. All right, man, so outside of football, man, what are some of the sports you play? Basketball. I used to play baseball. I used to play baseball. It's not a used to, man. We're gonna have to come back, man. We gotta keep the black kids involved in the game, man. So we'll start with your baseball, cause I seen a little smile crack across your face. So what position did you play in baseball? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you played all. You were you a five tool player? You were at the level where you you guys would switch positions? Yeah, we used to just switch positions. So what was your favorite aspect? Like if you could pick one and do it all day, what would you do? Everyone. Okay, hey, that's an option. That's an option, don't tie yourself down. All right, now before we go, we have to catch a, I think we have one more interview, a special announcement coming. So before we let you go, man, do you have any uh, clubs, any organizations, anybody you wanna give a shout out to? Shout out to my mom and my dad, my uncle, and my mama. Let's put some names on those special people. Mm. <laughs> Eugene, Sasha, Charlotte, and Roderick. It's because he's been catching you since you've been in the sling. When y'all play fight, he be really tearing you up. You, you didn't want to say your name, man. You can't be, let him let him recover, bro. So he can have two hands. And he said, "Daddy said, nah, you gonna get that work." Well, it be like that sometimes. Well, hey man, I appreciate you taking the time to be on the program. We're gonna have a lot more of this young man now that they're over here and made the shift over to the Big Twelve. So you'll be seeing them on our screens and screens all around the internet. You know how we do media over here. Uh, we'll be right back with another interview. You're watching the Big Twelve Media Day TNS Edition.
All right, guys, we've got last but not least, man, one of the faces you've grown accustomed to over here with the TNS Cougars. We got CJ Wilkins, man. Uh, he's a kid uh, who's got his hands in a couple of different pots, man. He's an athlete, uh, he's a scholar, and he's an, a young entrepreneur, man. So we want to go ahead and touch on all those aspects today. So outside of football, we're going to start outside of football because we know you from football. So tell us, man, what you had going on in your uh, business life. Uh, just uh, selling. Actually, I started working with Texas Sports at the Battle of the Bigs, and I finally made enough money to start my business. And so I had got when I first started, I got visors, and then next day, uh, 
well, I think it was like towels, and then next day Vibes just rolled in, and ever since then it's just been popping. All right, man. All right. So tell us a little bit. What's the name of your brand, and uh, what's what's the the vision behind it? What actually inspired you to start? All right. So the name of my brand is Unleash, and the vision behind it is before every game, I like I like to have something new. I'm a I'm a, I'm a lineman, but I, I dress like a skilled player. So like I got I got to be the flashiest on the field. Like you yeah. gonna you gonna know CJ on the field. And so like um, it's it's a lot buying like Oakley or Shock visors like sixty eighty dollars on the visor. And then I was like if I if I just start my own I don't I don't gotta pay that much like I I still pay for it but I don't gotta pay that much. So and now I thought I could do this for everybody. So like so it's not just me. So I, I ain't really gatekeep nothing. So like I sell the visors for cheaper because I want kids like me to have drip too or kids that won't be able to afford the sixty dollar shock visor or the eighty dollar Oakley visor to be able to have a visor too. Man. I like that man. That's crazy. You know, what's funny is I remember there's probably several uh text messages to my baby mom and I I call my son Drip Humphrey, he must drip at the games. So, you know, I understand you big man, bro. And this is something I need to say to all the parents, man. I have this rule, you know, about all linemen. When you go to a game, and hold on, let's have my guy come over. Come on over here, man. Come on over to the interview. We have my guy be, be the model for this, man. Jasmine, can we get a view of my guy right here? Now, there's an international rule about linemen, and it goes this. If they got pants on their shin, it's going to be hard for them boys to win. So let's look over here at this lineman kid right here, man. Now he comes in here with the Adidas Zero cleats on. Wide receiver cleats. He's not going to wear no lineman cleats. You got to really drip on him. Then he comes with the half sleeves. Back up a little bit. We got to get the full drip, man. We got to get the full drip in the camera. Now, but the most crucial part about his lineman drip is when you get up here to the leg area, you notice that he does not let the pants be down all on his shins. He's really supposed to be, it's supposed to be above, above the knee. Like... I I ain't really get them right today, but they, they, fell, down. To, they fell down. They fell down. They fell down. You see, man, we see we got some real swagger linemen in here, and it probably, you know, it goes back to what Coach Deion Sanders used to say: If you look good, you play good, man. If you play good, they pay good. You feel me? Yeah, that's 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 what I love. Like, I really really like that. So, right now, I'm really working towards extending into more gear branches, as I would like to say. Like, as you can see, I don't, I, I don't know if you still got them on, but his arm sleeves, if, yeah, they had unleash on them in the photos. Yeah, so I started trying to branch out with new things. So, uh, so far, what are the products that you offer through Unleash? So I know you say you have the arm sleeves, the towels, so what other swag items you have? So really, right now, it's only, I did have arm sleeves, which were, the arm sleeves were 15, leg sleeves were 20, but I'm, I'm out of those right now, and then, I do have towels. Just temporarily, yeah, I just temporarily. I do have towels for 12 and then visors for 25 and uh, trucker hats for 20. And there is more coming soon. Now, uh, hold on, producer, you got a question? I think, we, I think he's going to be the official uh, producer of our, our Semi Pro Live gear. I'm going to send you our logos, and if people want to buy Semi Pro Live gear, we're going to talk to you after this, and, and we'll make a deal together. You'll be our first oh, official Sponsor Pro alert. Live. Sponsor <laughs> alert. All right. Well, hey, man, Semi Pro Live collaborating with Unleash. We got it on live, so you know now we can't renege, so we are going to have to give this kid money. Yeah. So that's why we're going to be charging the parents and everybody else. But, <laughs> but outside of that, man, so. Uh, we, we found out about the different uh, things that you guys offer. So if I want to order, how do I get in contact with you or how do I place orders? So you can go follow us on Facebook or Instagram for right now. And uh, when you go there, there should be the our website link in the bio. And you can go there and you can place an order. And, uh, and once you place it, it gives us a little ping. And we, we shipping it out probably next morning or next night.